to the next thing, we should also be able to do this, the bootstrap confidence interval, at least in one more situation, and then I hope you get the feeling of how you can generalize this to any situation out there. Let's generalize it to the situation with two samples. So we are going to make an alternative to the confidence interval for the difference of two means that we were presented with in chapter seven. Here it comes. My data comes like this. Two sets of some X's, some Y's. We had, originally we had the nurses and um, secretaries example with the energy used. So that was, that was the example we used when we presented the classical confidence interval and t-testing. Now, here's a lot of words saying what we're doing. I realize I can improve the readability of these a little bit. I think I'll do that till next year. Um, first, we simulate for each of the two group, we take a lot of bootstrap samples, right? Or you could also say a bootstrap sample consists of taking one draw from the one group and another draw from the other group. That's one bootstrap sample. And then I do that many times, right, from both groups. Um, then I many times, so the idea is the same, all the times, many times for each bootstrap sample, as we call it, I not only compute the mean of one thing, I compute the difference of the two means many times, right? That is what I'm saying here. Many times I compute what I'm interested in, namely the difference between the two means, and then I do the same thing for this difference. I look at these, all these many differences, and I extract the confidence interval by the percentiles of this distribution coming out of it, right? It's the same thing as before, just having two samples instead of one. Here's another stupid example by now. After eight years, you need to start thinking of changing some of your examples. So anyway, this is still an okay, it's, it's related to, to my mom again. That's why I, uh, not to my mom, of course, to, to moms in the 60s. Um, anyway, I touched on this, that they didn't give breastfeeding. Then you could also worry about whether uh, breastfeeding or not, or rather uh, children getting milk from the bottle or not, if we focus on that part, and whether that has an influence on how your teeth development, how your teeth health is going to develop in your life. And uh, this is a small data set trying to illustrate that point where we take a number of children, 19, put them into two groups, whether they have used bottle or no to bottle or yes to bottle. Um, and then we look at what is the age of the first time they get into problems with their teeth. That is, uh, and, and it, clearly the, if there is a difference in the average age of when you get into trouble, there might be a consequence of whether you use the bottle or not, right? So the earlier you get problem, the worse it is, right? So it's good if you have low ages, and sorry, it's good if you have high age here, so it's good to have a high age for the first time you get run into problems. That's uh, the explanation of this data set. Let's try to just start out by disentangle the table. We would have, of course I jumped to R right away, since that's where we do it. We have the no group and the yes group. Should we just check what is, how many no's did we have? And how many yeses did we have? Nine in one group and 10 in another group. That's okay, we can have different numbers in the two groups. Um, let's have 10,000 bootstrap samples. Let's just do this two times, which I before did only one time. I many times, 10,000 times, I replicate my sampling from X with replacement. I do the same thing. I many times sample from Y with replacement, right? I many times compute the X means and the Y means, and then I just subtract the two sets of 10,000 means to get what I have called my 
mean diffs. That's my name for it. We can have a look at my mean diffs. Here are my mean diffs. Of course, we should look at the zero, right? Are we, does, does this sort of more or less include zero or not? If we're away, if we're away from zero, we have proven that there is a difference. If zero is there, there's not a difference. I mean, that's the basic idea. This is, a, this is the sampling distribution of the mean we're looking at. Is, it, uh, is zero odd? If, if that's, actually, I'm, I'm slightly ahead of myself, but still, we're getting there in a sec. To finish off, to get the confidence interval we do as before, simply extract the percentiles of this histogram or of these numbers. And these two and a half and 97 and a half percent point is actually strictly below zero, right? If we want. Should we compare with the t-test just for the fun of it? Look at the t-test here using the normal assumption. It's not dramatically different. 6.9, minus 6.9 up to 0.19. But still, it's somewhat different. A better, I would believe this one more actually, because it more correctly takes the actual distribution of the data into account, not assuming the normal distribution for the data. So I believe this one better. And in fact, it has the neat thing that this one does not include zero, whereas the other one does include zero. So actually, that's a coincidence. It's not, a, of course, a dramatic difference in results, but it's a noticeable difference, I would say, here. Yes. That was actually now bootstrapping confidence intervals in the two-sample situation. Let's make a